the ferocity with which a people will fight for home and hearth, for religion and traditions when those things are threatened, is well known. A man fighting for something he perceives as his own is a much more courageous and tenacious opponent than a man motivated solely by a paycheck. And that's what America and the left and Biden like to do. Whatever the problem is, they just want to throw money at it. And they call it equity. You steal from one person, give it to another. Equity. Oh, you know, you, uh, the schools are failing. Uh, throw some more money at poor neighborhoods so somehow that that's going to fix it. But that's not what made the uh, well-performing schools perform well. You know, there are other factors. Maybe they're performing well and they're in a richer neighborhood because the family's intact. Because you got two parents who love each other and they both have good jobs. But they don't think about any of these things. In fact, they're the ones that are so mammon-driven, blinded by the God of this world, the God of mammon. So they look to money as the be-all and end-all. And they'll often criticize religion and say, oh, religion is about money. No, it's actually their own mindset. We are about helping people, serving people, ministering to people. But if your mind is always on money and you think money will fix everything, then you're going to love money so much you won't give, you won't do anything with it. So that's actually the root of the left's problem and Mark's problem. Jesus gave us the answer 2,000 years ago why America would lose the war on terror. Quote, he said, but the hireling, the one who works for money, the one who's motivated only by money. If I'm paid, I'll work. That's the hireling. If I'm not paid, I'm not going to work. That's the hireling. But the hireling, and he that is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, seeth the Taliban coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep. And the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling. And he hath no care for the sheep. Now, I, don't get me wrong. I know that there are pastors, so-called pastors and ministers, who have their pay, they're a pastor. And when they're fired or a committee votes them out, they no longer pastor. Well, that's not a pastor. You know what tells me you're a pastor? That you pastor all the time. If you really are a pastor, pastor where you're at. Don't just say, when I'm paid, when someone offers me a job, when a church headhunts me, then I'm going to pastor. If you're a pastor, you'll pastor all the time. If you're a singer, you'll sing all the time. Not just going to sing because somebody notices you and is going to pay you, know, you some money. You're going to sing because it's you. It's your gift. It's what your purpose is on the earth. So whatever it is that you're called to do, be that now. Don't be motivated by money. And if you say, no one has given me a job and I don't, you know, I'm waiting. Well, what are you supposed to do? Well, let's say you're supposed to be an architect. Well, no one gave me a job. The market is really tough out there right now. Why don't you go be an architect for someone for free? Why don't you give your gift for free and serve? And you know what? When they see your value, they're going to pay you. They're going to keep you. Be who you're supposed to be without being motivated by money. Don't just say, I'm not going to accept a job because, well, it's not paying or giving me the perks that I want. If you will just be your gift and develop it, the money will come. It will just come, right? Because you're a special gift on the earth. If you start solving problems, then you will get compensated. You will get rewarded for that. So, the Taliban, back to the Taliban, they were not hirelings, were they? They were not getting stipends from America or Australia. The Taliban were willing to die to defend that culture and faith. The Afghan army, on the other hand, never had real skin in the game because they were culturally more sympathetic to the Taliban than to the United States. And I'm not saying people in Afghanistan love the Taliban, right? But this article says they were culturally more aligned than all of the rainbow waving that's going on under Biden's U.S. embassies. That's not what they're about. And they don't, you know, Biden doesn't understand it. Biden misses it. He says, we gave them every chance to determine their own future. What we could not provide them was the will to fight for that future. But what a great political 
sentence that somebody wrote for him. No, we didn't give them the, the chance to determine their own future. We gave them the future that we wanted them to have. A future that was foreign and undesirable. And we paid them to fight for that American future. And in the end, they decided they'd rather take their chances with the Taliban and a religion and a way of life that was familiar to them. So as I said, I saw this for many years on the mission field. American preachers assuming American culture equal Christianity. And Americans assuming that Americans are right. And it's and it's, you know, it's an amazing thing to be in America. It's a large, successful, mainly Christian country. And so a lot of times, you know, people don't see the good side of America. I see it. I see it. But you can't assume that the American culture is universal. That it is something that can be exported everywhere and, and meet with success. It's proven again and again that's not true. We need to export Christ. We need to preach Jesus Christ. I saw a lot of American preachers give their lives to the mission field and when they met with resistance, not realizing that it was their own culture that was being resisted, not Jesus Christ, then they went back and assumed and reported to their home base that all oh, these Buddhists, they're so anti-God and they're terrible I, I, uh, idol worshippers. And little did the people who donate money to them and support them realize they would do things like this. I heard American preachers constantly preach cliches, things they heard other people say, like, Buddha is dead and Jesus is alive. Well, you know, they did that, a group did that, um, they came from YWAM one time and did that and they got deported out of Thailand. And then they had a youth that was so disrespectful, climbed the Buddha and, you know, tried to show that this is just an idol. And in fact, they got deported out of one of the most religiously tolerant nations on earth. In Thailand, you can preach anywhere. I mean, better than in Australia and the UK. You can preach anywhere and in any place. Start a church without any government permission anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, in any building. No license, no permit needed. It is so religiously free. And yet, how many Western people have gone in and, and said, it's the graveyard of missionaries? Until today, only 95 Sorry, 95% of Thais are not Christian, right? There's, they're Buddhists and Muslim and other things. Uh, less than 1% is born again. I really wish more Americans took seriously the message that God gave me 20 years ago called From Buddha to Jesus. It consolidates all of these cultural lessons into one you know, neat package. So, From Buddha to Jesus. But all of this assumption... Um, we saw on the mission field. Here's another assumption that Christians made. Assuming that the gospel is the message of grace while ignoring the problem of broken law and sin and karma. Now, karma is a great word, really, for, you know, sowing and reaping. A lot of people understand that. They say something bad happens. They say, oh, it's karma. They mean there's a consequence to sin. Buddhists understand that. But you come in and you just say, oh, no, 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 we don't believe in that. We just believe in, in grace and love and God loves you very much. Well, how, did, how far did that get the Christian saying that? The pre-believer listens to that. God loves you very much. And they say, who's God? Who's God? They don't even know the first word that those missionaries spoke. And how is dying on a cross a sign of loving me? They don't understand. But we have all these assumptions because in America, it's a Christianized culture. When you say God, you mean the Creator God, the God of the Bible, the God of Sunday school. You have so many assumptions in the background that you don't realize. Hey, put yourself in the shoe of someone who's never once heard of God, didn't even know that there is a God. What would you say? How would you start? And how would you connect with someone from such a foreign background? I think if Christians were better at this, there's hope that the American military and the American government would be better at connecting. Again, if the goal is to win, if the goal is to win the war and win the peace and bring peace and stability and democracy and Christianity to the world, then we've got to get much better at 
cultural contextualization, uh, you know, uh, better tactics and better tools for evangelizing the world. Because God knows if we don't evangelize the world, Jesus is not coming. When the gospel is preached to all the nations as a witness to all the nations, then the end will come. So it doesn't matter all the bad stuff that's happening in the world. God will always leave an open door for us to keep preaching the gospel. And that's why even though I live right now in the worst lockdown state in the whole world, you know, we're, we have curfews just like um, Afghanistan. The Af Afghanistan has the Taliban and Melburnians say we have the Taliban. You know, Dan Andrews is the premier here and he's you know, ultra left wing labor. And he keeps imposing all of these restrictions, even though they are unnecessary in countries like Sweden and Norway and Denmark and, and even Malaysia is out of lockdown. So how come, you know, we're all made of the same cells and genes. How come they don't have lockdowns and their economy is open? It's okay. It's about a plan. It's about control. It's about where they're wanting to head. So uh, even though we have all of these restrictions, I was saying, we still keep going. We still keep pumping the truth out and we wish you joined us. But you don't have to, even if you just wanted to learn about what's going on and get ready, prepare. We decide, okay, there's a group of people that want to come online church and there's a group that doesn't. You just want to, you know, uh, be where you're at. Maybe you have your own home physical church, but you want to grow. You want to prepare. You want to understand about the end time. So we called it End Time University. I really encourage you to come. Check that out, endtimeuniversity.online. You couldn't make an easier URL to remember, endtimeuniversity.online. And, you know, it's self-motivated, it's intense learning. You're going to get a lot of really good stuff over there. And I say that because I just think if Christians are more ready for the end time, then we're going to see more people saved, more people disciple. And I'll be sharing more testimonies in the upcoming videos, but we are seeing some amazing breakthroughs in different members, online members, families where entire families are coming to know Jesus during this Afghan, you know, um, debacle, during this COVID lockdown, God is moving. And I know, as a pastor, I know the news that's not, never going to be published on CNN or broadcasted on BBC, but God is moving. And if He's doing that for our online church members, why wouldn't He do it for you? If you believe the same, if you obey the same, you're going to see breakthroughs for your family. I think this is probably one of the best times where your family will be very open to hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to answer their questions? Are you ready to pray for them so that they will see miracles and healings and know the time? I'm going to close with that. You know, we started today with Psalm 74. Let me remind you, you're supposed to see this. But in the bad times when, when people are far from God, it says, we see no miraculous signs. There is no pro longer any prophet. Neither is there any among us, anyone who knows how long. Psalm 74 verse 9. We have a very good idea of how long. I think we have some time left, but World War III is coming and it will be soon. And even in the midst of that, there is time to call on the name of Jesus. Would you do that? Would you do that? Don't trust in the world. Don't trust in the media. It's hopeless. Don't trust in politicians. Don't trust in the military industrial complex. They're going to want endless wars. Trust in Jesus. He's coming back to judge. He'll right the wrongs. But before he does that, make sure that all the wrongs in our lives, all the sins in our lives are dealt with and forgiven by his blood sacrifice. He died and he paid for our sins. All right? So pray with me if you'd like to have Jesus in your heart and get ready for his coming. Just say this, all right? Say this with me out loud with your own voice. You say, Dear Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. Tonight or today, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I accept your sacrifice as the only full payment for my sins. I no longer have to be punished because you were punished and suffered and died for me. And I believe after three days you rose again. You're victorious over death, hell, and the grave. There's nothing that can separate me from your love. Thank you for making me your child. Thank you for using my life in this very important 
time. And save my family too, Lord. I commit myself and my family to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just sense God's pleasure. You know, you might be going through a tough time. There might be some difficult things going on. Some of you feeling symptoms of sickness and pain in your body. God loves you and he will heal that. Get to know who he is. Get on to online church or enroll in End Time University. Uh, even in the End Time University, we made sure that there's a course on healing because, man, the Bible predicted there's going to be plagues and epidemics and pandemics in the end time. So shouldn't we know about healing? Not just for ourselves. Start with ourselves. We need to be well, and then we need to bring healing to other people with love and compassion and doing it the right way, the way Jesus would. So it's all there for you, okay? It's all there for you. And if you listen by the end of this, it means that you're probably already on Rumble because YouTube does not let me say very much anymore. It's sad, but it's true. They're really censoring us. So we need to have an uncensored platform. Rumble's one, and our online church is the other one. We'll keep doing this. We'll keep giving you news from a Christian perspective and help you to live in a, uh, you know, a prepared life before Jesus comes back. But we need you to come and, and help support us as well and follow us at the right channels where we're not just going to get, you know, uh, blacklisted or memory hold at the whim at the whim of these big tech uh, billionaires. All right. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. We'll see you in the next update. God bless. Thank you.